morning. It's a Monday morning. Happy Monday. Uh, I'm Maria Oliva from the Cape Cod Canal Region Chamber of Commerce, and many of you know in Bourne that we're located at the railroad station in Buzzers Bay, right on Main Street, right by the Cape Cod Canal. So we love it there. And I'm here today to introduce a special guest today, State Representative Steve Xaros. And we love Steve. He does a great <laughs> job. He's very involved. He's, he reaches out to constituents everywhere. And welcome to the show today. Amen. Thank you. You're I love welcome. it. And I love your energy, too. And it's great to be here and talk about what we do. Sure. Now, explain to us your district, exactly what, you, what where you represent. That's a and great... I know that's going to change, yes. so you can get into that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, it's really amazing, and I'm proud to do it. It's 42,000 people, yeah. right, of, from wow. all walks of life. There's a little section of Plymouth. Mm -hmm. There's about half of Bourne, like Sagamore, Sagamore Beach, and then another section uh, near the base. Mm -hmm. All of Sandwich yeah. and two precincts in Barnstable. So it's mm -hmm. four towns wow. and two different counties mm -hmm. currently. Right. But yeah. uh, with redistricting, if I'm able to be reelected, which I hope, mm -hmm. starting in January, uh, Plymouth has been given to the Plymouth delegation, mm -hmm. and I get more of Bourne, which I love. I'll have all right. of Buzzards Bay, yeah, and yeah. Uh, more of Barnstable. So that's the future of the fifth Barnstable district. Forty-two thousand people. people. I didn't realize it was that 42, much. That's 000. a lot, and uh, I love it. And uh, you know, I call it the Fighting Fifth, the Fighting <laughs> Fifth Barnstable district because. I try to like uh, fight for our people and do, do good things for everybody. You do. So let's start with tell me a little bit about yourself, who you are, where you come. Oh, well, I know who you are. <laughs> 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 oh my God! And where you come from, yes. and uh, how long you've been in the area, and tell us about your family. You got it. Okay. I'm just a kid from New Bedford. Back yeah. in the day, I grew up in a three-decker, a tenement wow. we called yeah. it. My Greek grandparents on the first floor we were renting the second floor and someone else lived on the third floor just to poor, you know really kind of humble people my parents uh, both worked mm -hmm. and my Greek grandmother kind of raised me and my Wonderful. two sisters yeah I'm the middle of uh, three children I have two sisters uh, Carol and Patricia Carol lives in Bourne mm -hmm. Patricia lives oh, in a nice. Oh, nice. and I came to Cape Cod to be a police officer mm -hmm. uh, right. and I lived in Sandwich in Lakewood Hills mm -hmm. with my aunt and uncle thank God for them they've both passed but my uncle mm -hmm. Steve and auntie Froso they came to the Cape because he got a job at the plant, the power mm -hmm. plant, mm -hmm. when it was brand new. And I lived with them, went to Cape Cod Community College. So did I. All right. Yay. I'm the class of 78. <laughs> and uh, I loved it. Right away, I was like, wow, the Cape is beautiful. And I was lucky to be hired as a Yarmouth police officer I know it's so at awesome. age 19. Really? Yes, I had what? full head of hair and, <laughs> and a mustache. <laughs> and uh, I loved it, you know, 40 years yeah. of being a police officer from a summer cop mm -hmm. to the deputy chief. And, mm -hmm. you know, I ended up getting three college degrees, you know, Cape Cod Community College, Northeastern University, mm -hmm. Anna Maria College. So I have a master's degree. And loved every right. minute working with great people, serving and protecting. Mm -hmm. And uh, when Sean Gannon, my police officer, was murdered and Nero was shot, mm -hmm. that, um, that was a key point in my life. I decided that I needed to uh, uh, make a difference. Mm -hmm. And I, I ran for office to keep serving in a bigger way and right. to try to make us all safer. And uh, that's why I love what we're doing. And right now I live in West Barnstable mm -hmm. and I have uh, four children. Mm -hmm. um, I have twin daughters that are beautiful, Elizabeth mm -hmm. and Ashlyn. They live in Portsmouth, New Hampshire now. Oh, wow. I have a yeah. son, Alex, who is a police officer. Where in is he a police officer? In Yarmouth, in Yarmouth. yeah. Oh, good. He followed in your footsteps. He did. Nice. Uh, he was in Mashby and then he transferred. And the day I walked out of the building after 40 years, they had him waiting at the door. And when I walked out, we hugged and he went in. It was beautiful. Wow, that's a memorable moment. It, it, I'll never forget it. And then um, I have a son, Nicholas, right. who we lost in Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. He was uh, my firstborn. 
He's their big brother, and mm -hmm. uh, you know he never came home. Uh, he was killed in combat at age 21, mm -hmm. and he rests in the National Cemetery in Bourne. Mm -hmm. So you are a Gold Star family, and what is that? It means a support group, and you know other people who are Gold Star families? Yeah, it, a lot of people don't know what it is, but mm -hmm. a, a Gold Star family is something you know no one wants to be. But it started in World War One. So in World War One in America. If you had someone serving, fighting for our freedom in World War I, you put a blue star flag in your window with a candle. And that told everybody that that family has a loved one in war. Mm -hmm. And that tradition carried on from those days to today. So we had a red flag with a blue star in the middle, and we had a candle at our home. And then uh, when we lost Nick, you switch it to a gold star. So wow, that's at, very yeah, interesting. Uh, at our home, we have a gold star flag with a mm -hmm. candle, mm -hmm. and that tells everybody that they lost someone fighting for your freedom. Right. I know it must be emotional for you. Um, it's so important that people realize our veterans and what they do for us and the price of freedom. And the reason we, we're in the good old USA is because uh, our soldiers help us. And they keep Amen. us safe, Amen. and they make sure that we can always be free in this country. Is That's very well said. We are the greatest nation on earth yeah. because we have freedom, and freedom comes at a price, and uh, my family paid the price, you know. Yeah. Uh, so we, we try to live our lives um, dedicating to Nick mm -hmm. in a way. His last words, he screamed into the phone. He was... It was a horrible summer of oh. uh, Afghanistan in 2009. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he just screamed in the front. He said, don't worry about me. I'm living the dream. Wow. And uh, wow. three weeks later, he came home to us in a flag-draped coffin. Mm -hmm. And that's tough on a family. But yeah. uh, we've picked ourselves up the, mm -hmm. and we've uh, become stronger. Mm -hmm. We always loved our country. My dad is military. Mm -hmm. My grandfather, who I'm named after, mm -hmm. military. Oh. My dad served at Otis Air Force Base, mm -hmm. so we used to wow. come come through Buzzards Bay mm -hmm. and go to the air shows, and I love it. And uh, and um, we'll always respect our military and those that uh, serve, uh, families serve. Mm -hmm. And this area is very patriotic. Many people that live in Bourne mm -hmm. have some type of connection to the base. Mm -hmm. Yes, and uh, I love it. And yeah. Great. Always, always will Great. take care of veterans. In fact, I'm on the Veterans Affairs Committee mm -hmm. for the entire mm -hmm. state, which is perfect. Wow, that's awesome. Yeah, tell me about your legislative committees, uh, and then you can get into Nero's Law, yes. the Nero Bill. And yes. That, okay, so go ahead. Awesome. I'm, yeah, a, I'm a rookie. I'm a rookie <laughs> rep, right? Uh, you know, I did 40 years of policing, but never mm -hmm. did this, and uh, it's beautiful. I love it. It's all about serving, mm -hmm. in my mind, and representing, but serving, service before self, like a police officer, but in, in a bigger scale, because mm -hmm. it's the whole state. We have eight million people living in Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. We're represented by 160 reps. I am mm -hmm. your rep, mm -hmm. and I love it. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm on four committees, uh, yeah. so Veterans and Federal Affairs, uh, public safety, which is perfect, oh, and yeah. homeland security, yeah. elder services, mm -hmm. state administration, and then there was actually a fifth one, a commission that I was assigned to on police reform. Mm -hmm. So in the first year that we've done this, we did all those committees and hearings and listening to over 7,000 bills. 7,000 mm -hmm. bills have been filed, <laughs> and you have two years to give everybody a chance to you know, say their, their piece, let's say, and then the committees decide what to do with the bills, mm -hmm. and they go through this incredible right. process. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Then it goes to Senate, right? We have 40 mm -hmm. senators in mm -hmm. Massachusetts. Right. And then eventually, if it makes it through, it goes to the governor, and it's very difficult to get a bill uh, into law, and uh, I love the whole process. Mm -hmm. And I'm proud to say that a bill that I filed based on, mm -hmm. uh, you know, Sean Gann and my officer being murdered mm -hmm. and our dog Nero being shot mm -hmm. and, you know, me standing there when, when Nero was rescued out of that horrible home and he was bleeding to death mm -hmm. and nobody would help him. Mm 
mm -hmm. because in Massachusetts, uh, police and fire and EMTs are not allowed to yeah. help an animal. So I stood there and I saw him dying in front of me, mm -hmm. but the um, federal agents that were there, the ATF agents, mm -hmm. they, they helped stop the bleeding because they're trained to do that. Mm -hmm. And then we put Nero in a police car and a doctor and a police officer jumped in the back seat. They kept his airway open wow. and they drove in a police car and he ended up in Bourne mm -hmm. at the you know, beautiful veterinary hospital mm -hmm. underneath the bridge mm -hmm. and he lived. Yeah. Nero lived yeah. and uh, I retired and filed this bill uh, that was written originally by Rep Crocker. It didn't mm -hmm. make it. Mm -hmm. And then I took the ball and ran mm -hmm. with it and we yeah. got it done. And You got it done. We got it done. Look and at here, this. you know, here's our Nero Pup. Yeah. That's who he is. We've sold these all over the world. Oh, and wow. Really? To raise money? The world. Yeah. It has Sean's picture and story. Wow. Yeah. We built a. Right now, it's about $700,000 training facility at Yarmouth Police Headquarters. It's built all on donations from selling Nero and T-shirts. Wow, that's and incredible. It's incredible. And the police officers and their dogs go in the building. They train. There's mm -hmm. nothing like it in the whole state. It's named after Sean. Mm -hmm. And just a few weeks ago, that's where Governor Baker and Lieutenant Governor Polito came. Mm -hmm. And on April 12th, Four years to the day of Sean's murder, mm -hmm. we signed the bill into law in Sean's building mm -hmm. in front of Sean's mother and father and wife and Nero. Mm -hmm. Just so emotional. It's but, very emotional. you know, the thing is that you pursued it, something you believed in, and you really worked on it very hard, and so we congratulate you for that. It was a great oh, job. Thank you. You did it with other people, I understand, it's but you spearheaded it. Yeah, well, you did. it was personal. And, yes. Um, and it's the right thing, mm -hmm. and, and it's yeah. really special to see it become a law with everybody's help, like right. you said. Right, right. Um, and it's the right thing because mm -hmm. our dogs that serve us, if mm -hmm. they're injured in the line of duty, they deserve to be protected and cared right. for. Exactly. And now in Massachusetts, they are, mm -hmm. and it's the model for the whole nation. I'll have to buy one. Yep, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's a deal. We're sold out. There's oh, none okay. Left, but oh, there's wow. 500 more coming. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, put me down for one of them. Okay? You got it. <laughs> So, you want to talk about some legislative issues? Yes. All right, so let's bring up um, the replacement of the Bourne Sandwich Bridges. Um, the chamber, this chamber, the Cape Cod Canal Region Chamber, and the Cape Cod Chamber developed uh, about three or four years ago a coalition of about 25 people mm -hmm. throughout the Cape, uh, made up of uh, chambers, um, state legislator, legislative um, delegation, federal delegation, um, Cape Cod Commission, and everyone that were involved with the bridges. We just had to do something because of the situation with the traffic congestion, the repairs that they do on the bridges year after year after year, causing severe traffic delays. So we went forward together and really developed a strong support. Um, and here we are now. So now, um, I know you went to a meeting with um, Senator Markey. Yes and he um, explained exactly what was going on with the funding. I want you to explain a little bit about that. Absolutely. That is the project of a lifetime, mm -hmm. right? These bridges are nearly 100 years old. Uh, they're very narrow, mm -hmm. and they're, they're coming to the end of their lifetime. They were designed in the 20s, right? right? So we need to get new bridges. That's already been decided. But, of course, they cost over a billion dollars. Right, right. And my job is to be part of that commission that you mm -hmm. talked about. And I love it. I've been to so many meetings with the born selectmen, yes. mm -hmm. with people that all have a, uh, a take in this. Because, especially for born, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you might go over that bridge ten times a day. You know, right. both bridges are in born. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we need to get the funding secured from the federal government. And you're right, I go to meetings in Boston mm -hmm. with Senator Markey, Congressman Keating, mm -hmm. who lives in Bourne. Yes. Yes. So the bridges are so important. It is a project of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. uh, we need to get the money and mm -hmm. uh, we push hard to fighting 5th Barnstable District fights to make sure we get the money. Once we get it secured, 
then everything will fall into place. You know, the plans will be developed. Mm -hmm. There'll have to be land takings and it's really complicated. Mm -hmm. But it has to be done because like you said, um, the traffic and everything else, uh, the bridges just are too, they've come to the end of their life. Right. And right. not only is the traffic tied up when they're repairing them, but we're spending millions of dollars mm -hmm. every year just to keep up with safety, right. which you right. have to. Right. But eventually, if we could have two new ones, properly mm -hmm. done, wider, with a bike path and all mm -hmm. these ideas, mm -hmm. we'll take down the old ones and um, you know, be, be forever proud that w we did that. Right, that's good. I know um, uh, Representative Keating um, and I have communicated with respect to some residents or businesses that might be concerned but where they're located, yes. and we're not even there yet. And there hasn't even been a design yet because the funding hasn't been approved. And most people don't realize that the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers at the federal level has to approve this funding. So nothing is moving forward right now. And I know people think that um, the Bourne Rotary, that Mass Dot is doing, it's a, it's. It, on the approach to the bridges. So if they approve the bridges, this will tie into the Bourne Bridge. It all will, yeah. yeah. Mass DOT has been great. Yes. I was just in Boston at the JFK building, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful building. And in that room where ev was, you know, really everyone from every part of this project. Yeah. You know, the Senator Markey, Congressman mm -hmm. Keating, all the uh, Bourne selectmen, mm -hmm. sandwich selectmen, mm -hmm. DOT. So everybody's ready. Right. Uh, it's very competitive on the federal level. Mm -hmm. Every state in the nation has Bingo. their project right. that they're fighting for. Right. Uh, so, but Congressman Keating and Senator Markey are good at this. Mm -hmm. And soon we should hear that we've obtain the money mm -hmm. and everything will kick in. Everybody's right. ready. That's the key. Right. We're ready to roll. Yeah. And right. the, the feds need to hear that. These mm -hmm. people that select the different projects mm -hmm. in states, they know that Massachusetts is ready. Right. So give us the money and we'll get right. going. And there's uh, unanimity with respect to the type of project that's going on uh, and the support. And the and support is important. throughout everything. And the communication. Yes. Like, communication. You, like let people know what's going on. Yeah. And everybody should know that we're right in the middle of all of it. All right. So let's talk about something non controversial like the machine gun range. <laughs> 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 um, I, I know it's, I think it's with the federal EPA, the EPA at the federal level right now that's doing a, a study on this, but this very, um, there's, uh, uh, it's, it's an emotional subject and it's concerning because of the environment and the past Superfund sites at the Joint Base Cape Cod. So the Army National Guard is moving forward and uh, I know you were concerned about some of the issues facing that. Oh so. yes, yeah, that's a great topic to mm -hmm. talk about. Again, communication. Yes. I mean, me, I'm a big supporter of our military. Mm -hmm. they, they need to be well trained when mm -hmm. they fight for us and I know the dangers involved. But it has to be done right. So yeah. I've actually been in a Black Hawk helicopter wow. and they took us up mm -hmm. and flew over the whole base. Oh, and wow. uh, it's pretty Good. cool when you yeah. look down and see what they're talking about. You look down and you yeah. see both bridges like we're way up there. <laughs> and it's really amazing. And I've also put my boots on the ground. I've mm -hmm. walked that whole area. Okay. So there already is a range there. They just mm -hmm. want to make it bigger. Mm -hmm. But they have to do it right. Mm -hmm. because the concerns of the neighbors are noise, mm -hmm. um, traffic that may right. uh, in, you know, increase, and pollution. We cannot mm -hmm. allow right. pollution of our, uh, our environment, mm -hmm. especially the drinking water, which mm -hmm. they did do years ago. Mm -hmm. So all those concerns are being addressed, and I'm right in the middle of all of that with right. all of our Cape legislators, especially Senator Moran, mm -hmm. uh, Rep Vieira. So we're all mm -hmm. kind of have a piece of it. Right. And we want to make sure if they're going to do it, they're going to do it right. And right mm -hmm. now we're waiting for another study from the federal government that will address the concern. So it's exactly. still a little early, but yep. once, once that's done, we'll see where we're at. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to listen to everybody. You have people that want the range because yeah. it supports our troops. Mm -hmm. It's a base. And then you have others that say, boy, I'm concerned about the noise and the environment. Right. So we need to investigate it and make sure 
we basically cover all the bases. Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. All right, I got my little notes here, <laughs> all right. just in case. <laughs> um, I know you voted for the climate change bill. Yes. We had a discussion about that. Yes. And uh, what we're hearing from some business people in um, in the Canal Region area is they're concerned about electric. Uh, heat pumps yes. instead of tying into fossil fuels and the question is how much extra would that cost to have electrified heat pumps to heat my home and it'd be all electricity and electricity is the highest in is it the country or the <laughs> yeah it's up there yeah and um, you know there is some concerns and I think we all need um, changes in how we do business there's just no question about it because we're polluting the airways, we're p polluting everything, so we've got to make some changes there. So yeah. um, that's a concern, and it, I know that that's, my, I raised that to you. So. Yeah, it's very interesting, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, that's a whole other world, and that's what it I is. love to do is learn and listen, and these bills are complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, I can't imagine. Oh my, and they might start out as one thing, right? and then they get changed, so before you vote on something, you really got to read every word. Mm -hmm. That was a big vote, mm -hmm. and of course, it's just um, a vote right now, it's not done. Yeah. It goes to the Senate and then all those other right. things. Right, and then it goes to a, what they call a conference committee. If there's a difference, like the narrow bill, there were two different versions, mm -hmm. and then the conference committee made it one, oh, and yeah. you try to like resolve everybody's concerns. Right. It's pretty cool because you're making a law, not just mm -hmm. a good idea, it's a law. Right. So right. I've lived that world, and here's another one. Mm -hmm. Energy is so important. It's pretty cool too for our district. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have to take care of our businesses and their right. concerns. Small right. business really runs America. And also what makes us a little different, we have Mass Maritime Academy. Mm -hmm. I know, it's you know, that's wonderful. A, yeah, it's a world-class institution that's gonna be right in the middle of all of this new type of energy, mm -hmm. right? And then uh, where I live in Barnstable, we're actually, you know, they've, they're building the, uh, the uh, wind energy yes, out in the ocean yeah. and they're running it under the uh, ocean. I know, it's amazing. Yes, it? right through Barnstable. Yeah. It's actually happened. It's the first project in the nation. Mm -hmm. So the fifth Barnstable district, me, mm -hmm. right in the middle of all these things mm -hmm. and I take everybody's concerns into heart, yeah. my heart, and use my best judgment. Always keeping in mind that our businesses are so critical to us, especially after COVID, are mm -hmm. still in the middle of right. COVID. Right, oh yes. So every time we make a vote, I try to take that right. all into you do. Into and you know, mind. I know you, and I know that you, you do what's best for the whole, what's best for the, for the district, um, but what's best for the state, and, and, and everything. I think it's, that you yeah. um, work hard to hear everybody's concern, but then you have to make a final decision. Yes. And you know, sometimes that's hard, but hopefully people will understand where you're coming from, why, as long as you explain it yes. and engage them, I think most people will understand. They, they do. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, the biggest part of this job is, is serving others. Like, every day I'm mm -hmm. helping somebody, my office. I have one aide, Stuart Daniels, mm -hmm. and, you know, it could be someone's homeless, and now mm -hmm. you get them a house. It, so there's a lot of things that go on. And then part of the job is obviously making laws and like budget. Right. Last week right. I was in Boston all day, all night, uh, working on a $49 mm -hmm. billion dollar budget. Mm -hmm. And talk about all those issues. Must be a little overwhelming. It's, I find it exciting. Okay. Like, yeah, it, it <laughs> is huge, but if you, if you just stick to who you are, like uh, be transparent. Mm -hmm. uh, take it to heart. This is a very special job mm -hmm. that I'm grateful to be elected to do, mm -hmm. right, by 42,000 different people. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's hard work, but I love it. And if you stay true to yourself, honest, transparent, and I, I try to make my decisions with my heart in my head great. to help everybody. That's great. So that's the state house. Now let's talk about your district. You do a lot in your district, yeah. and people don't realize how much you do for constituents. You are everywhere. I see you <laughs> um, throughout your district attending a lot, not just fundraisers for nonprofits, 
but you do a lot for the community. And I wanted to bring one issue up that mm. you did, which was fantastic, um, with Joey Sintoni, uh, um, yeah. the island in South Sagamore that had been neglected for a while. He's a veteran that passed away in the Vietnam War, and our family grew up with him. And oh, our, wow. uh, the, my family home is about literally um, just a few steps from the island. Wow. So, and you helped um, with the Born DPW. Explain a little bit about well, that. Well, I didn't know you knew that. about that. I did, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you do a lot for the community. We do, and that's, uh, it's our job, mm -hmm. but it's also in my heart. Like, yes. I love it. I love uh, Born, Plymouth, Barnstable, Sandwich. Mm -hmm. Everybody has um, needs, you know, right. and they can come to us and we'll get it done one way or the other. Mm -hmm. That is a uh, great, project to talk about really because here's a young man he died mm -hmm. fighting for our country at yep. a young age yep. a son of Sagamore mm -hmm. kind of it reminds you of Nick you know a mm -hmm. son of Cape Cod and right. imagine years later uh, there's this island in his memory mm -hmm. and there's no water right. to help uh, you know water the plants and the right. grass that's something we can get done. Mm -hmm. So there's billion dollar projects, there's bridges, right. all those big things. But you know what? Taking care of a fallen son, right. a gold star family, right. is what we're going to do. And, right. and that's a team effort. That's the selectmen, that's DPW. Right. And but again, on, you initiated Well, we it. did because yeah. it's the right thing. Mm -hmm. and, and my our hope and our plan is on Memorial Day, I'm mm -hmm. the guest speaker for the town of Bourne, which will mm -hmm. be uh, on Memorial Day at 9 o'clock mm -hmm. at the town hall. But before that, mm -hmm. we're going to dedicate the, uh, the new island oh, with all the water nice. on Memorial Day. That's great. That's great. So I know you do so much in your district. Tell me about um, your, it's a big mix, yes. right? The ride. Tell me, explain what that is so people know yes. and what you do every year for that. Yeah. Yeah. When we lost Nicholas, you mm -hmm. know, um, these Marines came to me and they said, Steve, we want to do a ride in Nick's memory, motorcycle ride. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh my, I never rode a motorcycle in my life. Really? You know, never. Oh, wow. But there was a moment during the funeral when I was in the family car with my wife and three children. And um, it was very, you know, sad and mm -hmm. broken. We were a broken family, really. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, as we were being escorted from Yarmouth to the National Cemetery, um, we, we heard the sound of motorcycles. I don't remember seeing them, mm -hmm. but the, we were being escorted. You have flash you know, images of seeing this and seeing that. Mm -hmm. But my wife and kids were with us. Nick was in the hearse in front of us. And the motorcycles kept going by, and I heard the sound. And, and I looked at Lisa uh, and I said, do you hear that? And she said, yes. And I said, we're not alone. Mm -hmm. It just made us feel that we weren't alone. Yeah, so that awesome. motorcycle sound and my friends saying, we're going to do a ride is how it started. Mm -hmm. They taught me how to ride. Uh, wow, we started, I was the last bike out of 300, like 13 <laughs> years, shaking like a leaf, you know. I never rode, but I learned oh. and now we're riding and we... Here we are 13 years later. Oh, that's amazing. And it's 1,200 motorcycles. Wow. And I'm in the front. And we start at uh, the Sheriff's Department in Bourne. Mm -hmm. Yes. We go by the National Cemetery. Mm -hmm. And everybody in Bourne, uh, thank you, because we make a mess of the traffic for a little <laughs> while. <laughs> we can put up with that. Yes. It's, <laughs> it's for, worthwhile. It's for Nick and all the fallen. You know, mm -hmm. There's 16 that have died from Cape Cod in this war, which just ended, thank mm -hmm. God, um, Iraq, Afghanistan. And we go all the way along the canal and, and all the way down 6A through Sandwich and Barnstable. And we, we end in Yarmouth where Nick was born and raised. Mm -hmm. and we raise money um, and every penny is given away. Yeah, we, we have a nonprofit, mm -hmm. the Nicholas mm -hmm. Giaxaros Memorial Foundation. No one gets paid. It's just a nonprofit. It's all volunteer. It's all volunteer. It's managed by the Cape Cod Foundation. So oh, every, sure. Yeah, yes. they manage it. So every mm -hmm. penny comes in, goes to them. They do what they do with the taxes and, and everything managing it. Mm -hmm. And every, uh, every February 12th, which is Nick's birthday, mm -hmm. we give the money away. 
So wow. last year, um, or this year, he would have been 34. So on February 12th, we gave out $34,000. Next year, we'll give out 35000 Wow. We try to spread it all across the Cape to help people. And how do you raise your money for that? Well, it's twenty dollars to ride the motorcycle. Okay. okay. And then we sell T-shirts and, and hoodies, things. and okay. like yesterday was the blessing of the bikes, right? Mm -hmm. And it was really cool for me because that was down Cape. That was in I West saw Dennis. That on yeah, I did a video to you show do, everybody. I, you do videos all the time, <laughs> I but try. it's good because I it, it's very. Um, Tells us what you're doing, and you're so happy when you do these well, videos. Well, yeah, you know? thank you. you. I think it's positive. important to be positive, like yeah. you. Yeah. And and we, not every day is easy, mm -hmm. but uh, you be positive and you show the good. There's more mm -hmm. good than bad, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes Absolutely. the news is all bad, and that the country is divided. I don't think yeah. we are. I yeah. think most people are, are proud to be Americans, and mm -hmm. I try to show that every day. So yeah, the blessing of the bikes, right? Over mm -hmm. a thousand motorcycles, mm -hmm. that was, and and actually that was a, really cool a priest <laughs> goes up and down and you know blesses. That. It's pretty cool. He had a live video. So yeah, nice. and um, and money from that goes to help others, and and helping others is really who I am. Yes, and I think being a state representative is where I should be right now mm -hmm. to keep helping others. Mm -hmm locally right. or on a bigger scale. Right. It's all important. It's all important. Well, we at the Chamber work um, primarily with the business community, but we also do a lot of community events. We do free concerts, scholarships, because you can't, business and, and residents need to work together for, for everyone. And I know during COVID, there were so many issues with the business community and we got through that. Um, but where we're coming from is that we're always mindful of different legislation that might come up to, um, you know, that might be detrimental to the business community. So, right. you know, I might be in touch with you about that um, and other, other things because there's so many different types of legislation. You have to be on top of everything, right? It's really amazing. How do you stay on top yeah, of everything? Well, there's 7,000 bills. <laughs> <laughs> so I always so tell, everybody's filing bills. Yes, two, three, in the four, beginning, five. in the okay. beginning of your two-year term, right? I took oh, office oh, January sixth. Okay. You have a couple of months to mm -hmm. create these bills. I I filed twenty-one bills, right? Okay. And um, everybody's doing that, so it right. ends up with like seven thousand, and mm -hmm. then over two years, which we're in our second year. Mm -hmm. um, they have hearings and most of them don't make it and what happens people don't know is if it doesn't make it it's done mm -hmm. and now t the next term it doesn't go into the next term unless you get it gets refiled right. so sometimes it takes 10 years to get a, a bill <laughs> filed and get done but that's yeah. why nero's bill we got it done in 10 months i know that's it's really incredible. special yeah uh but Everybody should be aware of whatever bill they're concerned about mm -hmm. and come to me, especially if it involves our district. Yes. And uh, keep their reps informed. You mm -hmm. know, everybody has a state rep. Everybody yep. has a senator. And, uh, you know, send them emails. Make a phone call. Let mm -hmm. your, your elected official know how you feel. Mm -hmm. And if they don't really know that particular bill, just give us the number. We'll read it over. Exactly. It's, but... Keep on top of it. It's mm -hmm. it's government. That's how mm -hmm. it works. Right. We get elected to represent you. We do our best, mm -hmm. and we need to hear from you. And I love doing it. And like you said, sometimes we don't always agree, but it's important to listen, learn, and communicate what's right. going on. It's right. it's it's a very busy state, mm -hmm. and especially Cape Cod, mm -hmm. especially in the summer. Mm -hmm. And we have to keep it that way, you know, keep Cape Cod thriving, keep mm -hmm. it safe. Mm -hmm. We just, you know, hopefully are done with a worldwide pandemic that no one's ever done before. And you've helped to get us through that. I remember walking up and down Buzzards Bay you with did. you. You and, did, you, know, you came in. Yeah, talking yes. to the business owners, knowing yeah, that. that was great. Well, they, they need to know that we're too. there for them. Yes, yes. yeah. It's, it's, it's difficult. I mean, the pandemic is winding down now, but there's still um, some difficulty with some businesses in the area, and we're, we're trying to help them. And during the pandemic, the chamber worked um, with the state and federal agencies regarding PPP loans yes. that different businesses could get, yes. and idle loans, and um, PPP. Actually, they were outright grants. Um, but that really made a difference with the... Um, 
the business in residence because jobs are important to oh the community. Oh, my God. Yes. Labor, labor shortages now. Yes. What we hear from our businesses now is um, they can't find help, which is a nationwide problem. Yes. And then they have to cut back their services or product and can't perform those anymore because they don't have enough help. And that doesn't really help the business. So if you're, if you're too busy sometimes to, to handle it, that's always a problem as well. It really is. And we hear that all the time. You bet. Uh, uh, jobs, there's so mm -hmm. many jobs, but not enough people. Part right. of it is, uh, if people don't realize, part of it is the baby boomer generation like me mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. they call it aging out. Mm -hmm. So that's part of it, that a lot of people have aged out or they left early because of COVID. So th that's one issue. And then uh, immigration is another issue. The mm -hmm. Cape in the summer relies on a lot of legal immigrants right. to help. Mm -hmm. There's a yeah. lot to it. Yeah. It's not that people are lazy and they're not working. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes there's just not enough workers. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge issue. And it also goes with housing. Right. Oh, right? housing. Speak to that yes, issue. That's, that's a real a, serious yes, problem. It really is, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, and it's not just uh, for low income, it's, it's really everyone is, it's hard to afford a home. Mm -hmm. uh, you can be a police officer or a teacher or a firefighter making, exactly. you know, good money, right. but you can't afford to buy a home. It's so, especially now. Yes. I mean, the prices are outrageous. Yes. There isn't a lot, of, uh, a lot of workforce housing for people to, to live in, and they can't find a place to live and they can't afford to buy yes. a house. And, and we have to make sure so. we, we we fix that because mm -hmm. Cape Cod relies on that. Right. We have people that live in New Bedford and off Cape mm -hmm. and they, they hop in a van every day and they go back and forth and they work and then they go home. Yeah. How about Nantucket, right? Oh, goodness. The, at, the median price of a home in Nantucket mm -hmm. is $3.3 million. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how yeah, can anyone, tough. regular person, yeah. afford that? And where is the workforce coming from? Right. So we're in the middle of that too, mm -hmm. housing, um, jobs, mm -hmm. retraining people. Also, you know, addiction is a huge mm -hmm. issue. Yes. Addiction, mental health. We're in the middle of all of that, and I feel it because mm -hmm. I've seen it as a police officer. Mm -hmm. I've seen homeless living in the woods. I've seen people die from addiction. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen people struggle with mental health. Mm -hmm. So I try to take my real life experience and put it into this job to make better and good decisions that actually make a difference. That's wonderful. So you do so much for the constituents. You do. You're always in, in your district and you're helping people and they could call you for anything, you know, gee, Social Security, uh, state benefits, or it could be to um, fix a, 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 a wonderful veteran there landscaping in the yes, island. You know, you yeah. do a lot of that. A lot of people don't realize yes. that you spend a majority of your time in in the area where you represent, and yes. you do so much there, and you've got to be at the state house. Yes, it's it's a tough. It tough is, but I love it. I love it's exciting. I love it. Um, mm -hmm. But I am what you would call a district style rep. Some mm -hmm. reps are in Boston, mm -hmm. and they're in their office, and they do their good work there. Yeah. Uh, some would rather be in their district doing good work where my people right. are. Right. Uh, and then go to Boston uh, when you're needed. So I'm mm -hmm. a kind of in the middle of both. I have a beautiful office in the people's house, mm -hmm. I call it the people's house, yep. and I want everyone to come. You know, it's been closed my first 14 that. months of my career, closed and uh, not allowed in the building, kind of weird, but we got through it, and now I do have a little cubicle in the state house, <laughs> and that's fine, yeah. and I want everybody in Bourne and Sandwich to come and see the people's house. In fact, um, Sandwich eighth grade, Mm -hmm. I went and talked to their class, civics. Mm -hmm. It's so important to talk about civics and patriotism. Yes. I do that as part of being history. a rep. History. History, mm -hmm. American history and, mm -hmm. you know, the good and the bad. It's, right. It all started here, mm -hmm. don't forget, in Massachusetts, mm -hmm. where American freedom was born. And in the state house is all the history. So the eighth grade class of Sandwich, 224 kids and 20 chaperones are coming to the state house. To, wow. get, to get a tour. Oh, that's so It's beautiful, that's wonderful. and that's in June. So anyone mm -hmm. that's interested, the tours are free. Mm -hmm. Come on, and I'd love to show you around. And mm -hmm. then they have tour guides, and 
Everybody should know what the people's house looks like outside and inside and see the people that are working for you mm -hmm. and all the history, the proud history of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. You know, it's funny going back into my earlier days. <laughs> many, many years ago, I worked as a legislative aide to um, uh, former state rep Jeremiah Kerr. I with, didn't know that. Yeah, wow. So, he actually passed away mm. unexpectedly, so I was there um, managing the office for, for uh, you know, in the constituent district for a while. And then I ran for um, selectman in Bourne, which is now called the Select Board. Yes. Um, but that was um, one of the highlights of my life, to, to get elected there and serve um, my town. So I didn't know that, but yeah. uh, so you know what I'm talking about. It really is exciting. Yes, and, it, it is. And, and, yes. and, and you've lived that world. Mm -hmm. And um, not everybody could do it or want to do it. Right. And they, they do what they do. You mm -hmm. know, they're plumbers, they're police officers, right. they're landscapers. Everybody has their, their mission. Yeah. And they should be able to come to their elected official and, and have their voices heard and, and learn how the process works. And I mm -hmm. love to teach it. Mm -hmm. And I love to show it, you know, again, I'm proud to be an American, mm -hmm. but also to be born in Massachusetts. Right. We are where American freedom <laughs> was born, right, in Boston. And I sit at the desk, at these little wooden desks, where, you know, Sam Adams uh, spoke in and This talked. is in the galley, right? It's, it's an you, amazing, yeah. in, the, in the room of House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. It's really amazing to see it. In fact, they told me the other day that at this little wooden desk, <laughs> uh, which, you know, they're hundreds of years old, there's a little metal circle plate. And they said, do you know what that's for? I said, no. And they said, well, that was where when you smoked, you would put your ashes. <laughs> So that, that term smoke filled room oh, yes. is was that real. How it came? Yes. Oh, no, Imagine funny. 160 or 200, whatever it was, <laughs> smoking in a room. And oh, that geez. so that's still there. And then oh, they said wow. when you if you take that metal circle off, what's below it is an inkwell. Because mm -hmm. that's where they used to dip to the ink, sign wow. the documents. That's so that's so interesting. It is. Yeah. And yeah it's 2022, great. and we're still using the same <laughs> desk. So I that's being it. resourceful. <laughs> <laughs> well, I really appreciate uh, you coming on the show, and um, you do a great job. I respect you. I Thank think you. that you really are dedicated, um, and, and you, you're full of integrity. Yes. And, and we really appreciate your service. Very a much. Amen. Right back so, at you and everybody okay. out there. Um, it's how I'm made. Okay, great. That's great. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, you have a wonderful day. We will. Okay, thank you. Thank you.